Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, so if you can see behind me, that over there is my desk and it is a bit of a mess right now because I'm changing a few things around. Now, obviously 2020 hasn't quite gone to plan for many people, especially us wedding photographers. And in my case, that right there, that is my 2019 27 inch 5K iMac boxed up, ready to be sold. This was a huge investment for my business. Um, yes, over £3,000 worth of equipment, which I've also upgraded the RAM on. You might have seen the video on that. It's the 9th gen i9 8 core processor, terabyte solid state drive, 580x graphics. It's a beast, but times must, and she's going. Instead, I'm now editing all my videos and photos, everything on a 13 inch 2020 MacBook Pro. And this is a little beast. Honestly, this is just the i5 version, 10th gen i5. And for many, many things, it blows the iMac out of the water, especially in single core. I don't know why, but this thing is astonishingly quick. It's not too shabby in dual core either. The only downside for me is there's no real graphics card in there. It's just the built-in, whatever's on the motherboard. But today, we're gonna to fix that. So I've never really done a desk setup video of sorts. I sort of introduced the iMac when I first got it, just because I was dead excited. It was my first iMac, but it wasn't really a desk video. I'm not gonna show you all of my desk because it is a bit of a mess. But what I'm showing you today is what I'm doing to make this 13 inch MacBook Pro a real workstation. So first off, I'm obviously gonna need a monitor. Obviously that wasn't really an issue with the iMac. Next, graphics. I'm gonna show you how I'm dealing with my graphic situation. And then third, I'm gonna show you the main item, which is tying it all together. So I've got some boxes to unpack, so let's get to it. And yes, it is a Christmas jumper. So, first off is the monitor. This here is the LG 27UD88. Now, I've actually owned this monitor before when I was using my 15 inch MacBook Pro. And quite handily, I actually managed to pick up this one second hand for exactly the same price that I sold my last one, which is really nice considering this new one is in far better condition. So this is a really nice 4K display. You can turn and tilt it a fair bit, and it has a really nice array of ports on the back, namely being DisplayPort 1.2 and USB Type-C. In this configuration, I'm actually going to be using both USB Type-C and DisplayPort, so we'll get onto that in a minute. Using USB Type-C, you can actually also use the extra USB type A ports on the back of the monitor just for extra peripherals or whatever else you want. I loved using this monitor with my last MacBook Pro and I can't wait to use it again. Next up is graphics. Now with this 13 inch MacBook Pro there is no dedicated graphics. It's just the onboard Intel Iris. So in an effort to make up for the loss of dedicated GPU I decided to pick up an eGPU in the form of the Razer Core X. This looks to be a highly praised external graphics housing, which allows you to throw in any graphics card you like. This one I picked up secondhand on eBay for £400, along with the Radeon Vega 56. It's dead easy to set up. All you need to do is open up the enclosure, slide it out, give it a bit of a clean if it's secondhand, like I did, unscrew the PCIe slot cover, this is just one screw. Pop your card in, put the screw back in to secure the card in place, plug in the power supply cables, and then pop the whole thing back into the chassis. That's it, it's that simple. In the box with the Razor Core X, you get a power cable, a nice, albeit short, Thunderbolt 3 cable, your usual documentation, including installation guide, and some stickers. It connects through from the bolt 3, which is perfect for me. So before connecting it to a monitor, I thought I'd just give it a quick test, make sure that it's all working. All you need to do is, once the card's in, 
plug in your power, plug in your Thunderbolt 3, switch it on and it should automatically connect. You can see here in the top toolbar you get a little logo that appears and this is just what you need to disconnect your eGPU. Just click that button, wait a few seconds and it's done. And finally, some of you keen-eyed viewers may have already seen this on my desk. This is the CalDigit TS3 Plus Thunderbolt 3 dock. Being externally powered, this can not only charge your MacBook while it's in use, but also utilize the full potential of the Thunderbolt 3 interface. It has a huge array of ports while only taking up a single Thunderbolt 3 port on the MacBook. Those including Thunderbolt 3 Out, this is for your computer, Thunderbolt 3 Downstream, this is for anything like a RAID or an eGPU. USB-C 3.1 Gen 2, 10 gigabit a second. USB Type-C 3.1 Gen 1, 5 gigabit per second. Five USB Type-A ports, 3.1 Gen 1, 5 gigabit per second, as well as five volt charging. A UHS-2 SD card slot, gigabit ethernet, display port 1.2, 3.5 mil audio in and out as well as digital optical audio in the box you get your power cable a nice thunderbolt 3 cable as well as these little rubber strips these are very handy usually you'll see the ts3 plus being set up vertically but adding these two little rubber strips to the bottom of the device means you can sit it flat horizontally and it will not budge an inch so how do I have this set up? So on the side of the monitor stand, I actually have a little sticky cable holder with three Thunderbolt 3 cables. One is to the Cal digit, one is directly to the LG monitor, and one is to the eGPU. Depending on the job I'm actually doing, I can decide what I'm using. So let's say I'm just doing some emails, listen to music, I don't need an eGPU for that, so I'll just plug in the monitor directly along with the CalDigit. The CalDigit is connected to all of my external hard drives, external card readers, all of that stuff. If I need to do some video editing or photo editing in Lightroom, then I'll connect the eGPU. The eGPU is also connected to the monitor through the display port. So when I'm using that, I don't need to use the monitor's USB Type-C cable. So I'm only ever plugging in one of those two cables. It did take me a little bit of playing around over a couple of days to actually decide on this configuration, mainly because I don't always need the eGPU to be running. I did initially try plugging that into the CalDigit through the Thunderbolt 3 downstream, but I was getting some issues while trying to reconnect it. Sometimes it just wasn't picking up at all. Sometimes the hard drives weren't booting up so I just decided against it. Now having them all connected separately through their own Thunderbolt 3 cables, I can just use what I need at that time. In terms of peripherals, I'm using the Logitech MX Master 2S, the MX Keys, which I mentioned in my last video, as well as Apple's Magic Trackpad 2. So about a week and a beard trim later, I've been playing around a bit more with this setup. As soon as I had it set up, I, of course, ran a couple of tests, mainly with Final Cut Pro. So I just used an old project from a few weeks ago, one of these YouTube videos. I went into Final Cut Preferences and under Playback, I set the GPU to the Vega 56. It's a 12 minute project in 4K, 25p, working with S-Log2 footage and exporting as a H.264 file. Using just the Intel Iris internal graphics, it exported in about 10 and a half minutes. And then when I switched it to the Vega 56, it exported in six minutes, 10 seconds. So there's definitely a noticeable improvement there. These were carried out in the latest version of Final Cut. It's version 10.4.10. .10. And once I'd exported those, I decided to import for this video. This is where I ran into some problems. Checking in the activity monitor, I quickly realised the Vega 56 was doing nothing when I was transcoding footage. 
I couldn't quite figure this out, so I had a little look on the forums, on Apple support website, and on Reddit, of course, and it turns out that past Final Cut version 10.4.6, Final Cut no longer uses eGPUs for anything other than playback and export. So, yeah, I've basically spent this £400 purely for exporting my videos, which takes about 20 minutes a week. However, there are a couple of workarounds for this, one of those being backdating Final Cut Pro. So, again, through those forums, someone's actually left a link. I'll try and find it and leave it below this video as well, to download the older version of Final Cut Pro. So you'll need to uninstall Final Cut Pro to start with, just by going into the Applications folder, moving it to Trash, and then emptying Trash. Then you can go ahead, download this older file, install it, and then once it's installed, go into the Application folder again in Finder, and then find Final Cut Pro, right click to get info, and then you can click the option for prefer external GPU. And using it like that, yeah, it's great. But I'm now missing features from the latest versions of the software that I've paid £300 for. And then the other workaround that I've been experimenting with this week is to use a different editing suite. And that is why this video right now is my first ever video edited in DaVinci Resolve. This is just the free version. It's a program I had downloaded a couple of times actually on different machines and just never got around to actually checking out just because I was so comfortable in Final Cut Pro. That being said, this week I've really gone for it, tried to learn as much as I can in a week. It has been quite a learning curve and so far I definitely do still prefer working in Final Cut Pro, but I can see a good bit of potential for me using DaVinci Resolve more in the future, especially when it comes to colour. I really do hope that Apple sort it out, correct whatever they've done to disable eGPU usage. I always create optimised media before working on the project, it just makes everything run that bit quicker when you're actually cutting everything together. I have had a few quarrels and connectivity issues with the GPU as well. I don't know if that's just a software update, something to do with the MacBook. I've been sending data reports every time it crashes anyway, but hopefully that'll get sorted out. So there we go, that's my current desk setup for photo and video work. It's been a bit of a learning curve, um, but yeah, I'm sure I'm going to make it work. So as mentioned, last week I did a video all about the Logitech MX keys comparing it to the Apple Magic Keyboard. So if you want to see that one, be sure to check it out up here. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. Hope you might have learned something. You might be thinking twice about the eGPU now. If you want to see more videos like this, please do consider hitting subscribe down the bottom corner there. Do give it a like if you liked it. And if you've got any questions or comments at all, do drop a comment down below and I'll be sure to get back to you. Otherwise, until the next one, thank you very much for watching. Be good, stay safe and I'll see you in the next video.